Alright guys, so in this part I'm going to show you how to set up your uh, telescopic joint in this particular scenario. Now I wasn't going to show you, but in this case I guess I will do it a little bit. Um, basically I'll show you the flow of how it goes. I'm not literally going to, going to do it, but you'll see the things you have to look out for. Uh, one of them is when you do your point constraint to this bone and point constraint to this bone, you literally need to go in here and you need to make sure that this guy that your geo, this guy, is parented underneath this bone, the tip bone. And your geo here is parented underneath your root bone. If you don't do it that way, once you set up your point constraint here, and your point constraint over here, and then finally this, um, this bone here to be aimed, this bone. If you don't parent your geo in the order I just mentioned, I'll go over it again. This guy goes to this bone, and then this piece of geo goes to this bone. If you don't do it that way, it's going to push through the back end of your geometry. You'll notice my root is facing the head so that when it moves, I want it to slide in. See that? That's what I want. But we're going to have to do a set driven key. If you wanted to, you could put a piece of geometry in here and make it so that it's parented and it rotates. And that's one way you can do it, or you can do Setrovin key. And let me show you what I mean by making a piece of geometry. Unfortunately, this guy, since he's independent, he's all geometry, you'll need some sort of marker or object to be able to make this telescopic joint do what you want. Because this is all one whole. You can't really make that a Setrovin key, but you have to make a bone or a motion or a single object to be a Setrovin key. Um, so when this turns up, this telescopic joint pushes in. So there's SDK, you can do it, and then there's a cheat I'm going to show you where you just use a piece of geo. So let's go to polygons real quick. I'm going to go to the flat plane. I'm just going to make a quick piece, uh, quick piece of geometry. Let's go and rotate him. I'll do 90 degrees. And I'm going to move him up. He's going to be rotated again anyway. Keep my finger on the V key. I'm going to need to scale him down. So he's kind of ginormous right now. And let's try to find a midpoint we could put him at. Again, he's going to be in the middle of this thing. Let me scale her down. And this is a quick way if you don't want to do Setrovin key. Because the only problem with Setrovin key is it takes a while. It's not always the first choice for uh, riggers. They like to have stuff so that it's nice and um, quick and easy because you have a pipeline you have to deal with. And uh, Setrovin keys take time, which can be kind of a pain in the butt. So this little piece of geometry doesn't even have to be, um, you don't even have to freeze it. What we're going to do is we're going to parent it underneath this guy. So his rotation is going to cause him to move, which is going to, in turn, move our uh, telescopic joint. Otherwise, you'll have to do a set of a key. So what we'll do is grab this guy in the middle. Make sure, again, he's positioned correctly, the way that you want. Put it right at the tip of that bone. And then we're going to parent this guy underneath him. Hit P. See, it's parented now. And we're going to put him underneath this guy. Hit P. And you'll see that his pivot is now determined on this piece of geometry. So when I go and grab my controller and I rotate it, it'll rotate. So when we move this, you'll see the piston move. See, that's kind of cool. That's one way you can do it. But we really want it to react to this piece of geometry. So let me show you how that works. That's a, in theory how it is going to work. But what we're going to do, so let me see where it's at here. Is he still connected? Cool. What we're going to do is place him underneath this guy. Check it out. Because that's our neck, right? Yes, yeah, Sean. That's the one that's going to move. So we're going to hit P. Watch this. It's kind of cool. So when it rotates, we can get our piston to react. Oh, look at that! Isn't that cool? So now we have our piston moving with that ghosted piece of geometry in there. 
and uh, what it does is just pressing against it. Now there's multiple ways to do this. You can actually, if you wanted to, just link it so that it does move with this guy. You can do set and key. But I just stuck a piece of geometry in there to reference the positioning. That's pretty much all I did. And that's pretty much what you have to do for each one of these guys to get them to react and move the way that you want. But you've got to be careful because if you start rotating it, you don't want to break your telescopic joint. So just be careful how far you rotate it. And you might want to limit it, especially if you don't have enough geo inside of this guy. All right, so that's a quick way of how to do the telescopic joint. The next one, I'm going to show you guys how to go in here and create a nice little IK system. And what we're going to do is use the MC solver for the multi-chain and get kind of a little bit of a spider leg feel for these little fingers. That's about it.